ACDC's Fly on the Wall has created a bit of a buzz amongst critics and fans alike, for all the wrong reasons. But is it really that bad? Welcome Classic Rock fans to a short video on ACDC's Fly on the Wall. Before we proceed I urge you to click like, subscribe and check that bell to get notified of any future uploads. And do check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done here at Classic Album Review. This album is universally panned, considered by many to be an absolute complete stinker with that metallic chug of guitars platforming uh, Brian Johnson's inarticulations. Even classic rock has gone on to include it in their list of all-time worst albums ever. Rolling Stone has dismissed it as uh, sexist and incomprehensible. Criticism I don't really understand, to be honest with you, because I think sexist and incomprehensible are adjectives you could apply to most ACDC albums. In fact, only the other day I listened to Back in Black, an album that many argue is their finest album, but even that's full of lascivious cock-wagging, no doubt to whip Jermaine Greer into a complete froth. So why highlight this particular album? I think people have got to hate on something. At the time, all those Sunset Strip bands were kind of stealing the rock thunder, and I guess ACDC were an easy target for the Argyle Sweater Brigade. It has to be said that the 1980s were not a great decade for bands that had uh, essentially cut their teeth in the 60s and 70s. And not to mention MTV was awash with these poodle head groups that had uh, mistaken This Is Spinal Tap for a homage rather than a parody. For me, 1985's Fly in the Wall falls between two stools. It was a, a stripped back effort to get back to basics, uh, very much in the vein of their previous album, I think it was Flick of the Switch, which is now I rather like. But I think fans at the time were hoping for a more catchier rhythmic rock that we got on uh, in the likes of Back in Black. You've got to remember at this juncture the snotty nose thumbing of punk had pogoed off across the horizon to replace with the heroin chic of the new romantics. And also ACDC, just prior to this album, were probably competing with that tsunami that was the new wave of British heavy metal, often making older bands look like complete fossils. So I think ACDC probably felt uh, pressured on all fronts, which perhaps necessitates this desire within the band to go back to this back to basic sound, which the critics just thought was lump and stayed and rather predictable. But I think we need to cut this album some slack. To accuse them of misogynistic content at a time when uh, Motley Crue and Wasp were shagging their way up and down Sunset Strip seems a bit odd to me. A bit like being booted out of the Vatican for being too Catholic, as they say. Interestingly, Tim Holmes wrote of this album that uh, it seems odd to complain about the album's message when it was completely indecipherable. You sure as hell can't make out a single word coming out of that dentist drill glottis of Brian Johnson. But we've got to ask ourselves, within the paradigms of ACDC, is this album really that bad? I remember liking it, but then I was just about 17 years old when this came out, so what did I know? I remember that wonderful VHS EP that came out, which had the band performing about four of these songs within a barroom setting, a um, wonderful little cartoon fly buzzing about. I watched it to death, I thought it was fabulous. We get Brian Johnson's familiar tubercular rasp and the Young Brothers crunching riffs underpinned, of course, by Simon Wright's sledgehammer drums and some critics have taken aim at the quality of the songwriting itself feeling there was somewhat of a falling off with this album and we get lyrics like this ain't a gun in my pocket i got the goods in my hand fuck me leonard cohen eat your heart out but seriously did we really listen to acdc for its lyrical poeticism its political platforming or its spiritual aspirations. Absolutely not. We listen to ACDC because it's a no-nonsense thump and grind rock and roll. Powerful and abrasive. And God bless them for that. And as bad as those lyrics are, are they any worse than the lyrics to something like Let's Get It Up or Giving the Dog a Bone? All these songs epitomise the lascivious strut and swagger of this band, which is very much part and parcel of ACDC. And to be honest with you, this has always been the case, even since songs like The Jack or Girls Got Rhythm. These weren't exactly nuanced numbers. But granted, this isn't the finest ACDC album. I do feel it's a little bit bereft of ideas and a little forced. So they just uh, retreat back into those hard rock ACDC archetypes. A bit formulaic is perhaps what I'm saying, but I think they've done worse. 
blow up your video is hardly an album to brag about. If I may continue to quote Rolling Stone, Angus Young is also in great form playing the dumbest, most irresistibly repetitive chords in the lexicon. Well, you know, that's what ACDC do. And to be honest with you, I love the, the, some of the riffing on this album. The title track is absolutely wonderful. Uh, Shake Your Foundations and Sink the Pink, which is not a song about playing pool. A bit of a heads up there for you. So I thought I'd revisit this album, an album I've not heard in Donkey's Years. How long a Donkey's Year actually is, I don't know, but it's uh, a pretty long time, I suspect. And just to see how it sounds uh, to me now. I mean, granted, this album lacks the boozy looseness of the Bon years, but this band had lost that years ago, to be honest with you, prior to this album coming out. I think it was a concerted effort, as I've already said, a concerted effort by the Young Brothers to re return to a simpler, less affected sound and try to recapture the vibe of those early records. But I just don't think they quite get there. The Bon years wasn't just about lewd lyrics and crunching guitar riffs. There was a lot more to it than that. And the sound on this album is also affected by the fact that we're missing Phil Rudd. I think this is the first ACDC album he doesn't play on since the original Australian version of High Voltage. I could be wrong there. And don't get me wrong, Simon Wright is a, is a fine, fine drummer. But Phil Rudd had, there was something about his personality which very much uh, fed into the sound of this band. All Music at the time said that uh, Fly on the Wall continues ACDC's descent into cookie cutter mediocrity. And even Clinton Walker, the guy that wrote Highway to Hell, the biography of Bon Scott, described this album as a complete disaster. But I think this album is unjustly maligned. It's let down terribly by the mix, in my opinion. It's very much a 1980s album, and I'm not a fan of those 1980s production tropes, as well you know I've moaned about it incessantly on this channel. That being said, on this record, I do think there is a striving after some sort of authenticity, and that's apparent in the, in the guitars and the instrumentation and the attitude of the band. Um, specifically in relation to Brian Johnson's vocals, uh, they've, put some, they've put some reverb on his voice, which was very much customary at the time, I guess, but it just sounds so wrong in the context of ACDC. Plus, his voice is way, way too low in the mix to be almost subterranean. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I think Brian Johnson is pretty incomprehensible at the best of times, but it's nice to be given a chance to actually hear him. So then to conclude, I don't think this album is as terrible as people like to make out. It's not the finest ACDC album, not by long chalk. But it's just one of those records I think that could desperately be salvaged or rescued by a remix. And there's lots of 1980s uh, rock albums that could be rescued in the same way. Black Sabbath's Born Again is one that I'd love to see be excavated from all these horrible 1980s production affectations and Fly on the Wall would definitely sound much much better with a starker more honest approach. So not one of their best albums but not deserving of all the hate it gets. So what do you think? Do you think this album deserves the panning it's got? Please leave your comments below. Other than that I will leave you with my usual closing salvo which is uh, thank you for watching this. If you've managed to get to this point without switching off I thank you for doing just that. And I just hope that you're well, staying safe, but more importantly that you keep listening.